Shall we have a referendum on whether under 18s can change gender? It's time now for the Had to Had. Well, Rishi Sunak has been talking tough today ahead of the publication tomorrow of this landmark CAS report into gender services for kids, warning that allowing children to change gender is not a neutral act. The review was commissioned in 2020, following one of the biggest scandals in British medical history, which saw the controversial Tavistock Clinic shut down after a report found that thousands of vulnerable kids were prescribed puberty blockers without adequate concern for their welfare or an understanding of the effects of these dangerous drugs. Now, despite the scandal, it emerged just weeks ago that private clinics are still prescribing puberty blockers to young children after as little as six online consultations. And to make matters worse, a shocking new study has revealed that 73% of schools in some parts of England are defying the government guidance and allowing kids to change gender behind their parents' backs. So, with kids still being prescribed puberty blockers and allowed to socially transition in schools, I am asking, should we have a referendum on whether under-18s can change their gender? Let me know your thoughts. Email me now, gbviews at gbnews.com. Tweet me, of course, at gbnews. And while you're there, make sure you go and vote in our poll. The results will follow in a few short minutes, but going head-to-head -head on this. Of the discrimination barrister Robin Moira White and human rights advocate Miranda Yardley, thank you very much for joining me on this. Uh, Miranda, I'll start with you. Should under-18s be banned from changing gender, do you think? I think, I think that's an interesting question. Um, the, I think there has to reach a point where people are able to uh, take a decision as to what they do with their lives. I think that the idea that young children should be changing gender and adults affirming this, adults substantiating a, a self-belief that has no foundation in reality, that they are the sex opposite to which they, <laughs> they, they physically actually are, I think is an incredibly uh, dangerous thing to do. My own viewpoint on, on this being someone who thinks, you know, that generally people should be able to live their lives the way that they want to, is that changing gender, whatever that may be or may involve, is part of the world of adults and mm -hmm. like other things that only adults do, like, for example, smoking is mm -hmm. something that should only part of, be part of the adult world. And even then, adults <laughs> would be okay. well minded to keep away from it. That's a good point. OK, so, Robin, I'll, I'll bring you in now. You know, you've got to be 18 to buy a packet of Camel Blues. OK, but, you know, you could be well under that age, and decide that it's OK to transition. Why should we be allowing this? Shouldn't that be banned? Well, in fact, we've decided that the age for smoking will get um, higher and higher in the future so that we'll reach a point where nobody smokes because the harm, harmfulness of smoking is obvious. But there is, for, for all sorts of aspects in life, there is an age consideration where people are taken to be mature enough to, to take decisions about themselves. Um, Gillick competence, for example, taking um, anti-pregnancy um, med medication is something that people are able to do for themselves when they reach sufficient maturity. What is that? I'll sit with you, Robin. What is that sufficient maturity then? If we're saying that we shouldn't ban under 18s from being able to transition socially or medically, then well, what, what age is there? Let's put an age on it. No, it, you can't do it like that. And that, that's why having a, a, a referendum is the wrong way. Pe people mature at different speeds and at different ages. And when they're able to understand the implications of the choices that they're making in life, then they're of an age to make those choices. But who decides whether they're mature or, enough or not? Well, in, in exactly the same way that abortion um, uh, medication can be prescribed by a GP if the GP decides that the patient uh, under 18, but the patient is um, uh, mature enough to take um, anti-pregnancy medication, oh. then there, there is a healthcare professional involved in that circumstance. Okay. M and that's Gillick competence. All right, M Miranda, I'll, I'll come to you on this now. I wonder whether or not there's something a bit creepy about adults telling kids that they know what to do with their own sex organs. Oh, totally. The um, the whole idea there about Gillick competence applying uh, is is a real non sequitur. Uh, the 
a child is, in fact, I, I would say <laughs> anyone that's actually been through any any process of, of relationships and um, um, even even the process even even the process of uh, being part of a family is not really capable of understanding the implications of removing your sex organs and removing your ability to reproduce the whole what one of the one of the main problems i have with this whole idea of trans kids because, uh, apart from it making absolutely no sense on any 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 moral or scientific or even equitable ground there's no factual evidence to back it up that it's something that that is a real thing is that so much of it is being used by uh, late transitioning males to hide behind children and take out what the American trans activist Autumn Sandine in about 2000 called um, it takes the sex out of the trans experience. OK, and look, final words to you on this, Robin. You, you got, I thought, quite exercised there at the idea of me suggesting that it might be a bit creepy that adults could tell kids that they, they know what they're doing with their sex organs. I think it's a bit creepy indeed for, for other people to make choices about other people's sex organs. But if, if a person is able, reaches an age where they're able to fight for their country, surely they can make a decision like this. And, and it's important to remember that we don't allow people below the age of 18 to have, have surgery. That has mm. to wait in the UK until they're 18. I just wonder all too often it appears to be parents who are the final consideration in this. Teachers can have a say, librarians can have a say, all of this stuff can have a say when it comes to, you know, therapists at schools can have a say, doctors can have a say. Why no, no. can't the parents have a say in this? Why, why is it always assumed that the parents are, are, are the bad guys in all of this? That's the one thing that I find, you know, particularly well, creepy. Pat about Patrick, Patrick, it isn't. Um, there are a well, tiny number... percent of some schools but, in some areas, it is. Yeah, there are a tiny number of parents who don't um, don't look after their ch children well, and schools are used to spotting that and knowing when that occurs. Right. That's in tiny numbers, and in fact, the 27% in your survey, who the implication is that they would, whatever the circumstance, tell the parents what the. What I, 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 I'm, the I'm sorry, I'm just not sure that's true. I mean, one parent found out on Parents' Evening that Sally was now Stephen. You know, and I just find that I find that absolutely bonkers. So, th thank you very, very much, both of you. It's been a pleasure to have you both on the show. It's Robin Moyle White there, and human rights advocate as well, Miranda Yardy. Look, who do you agree with? Okay, should we have a referendum on whether under 18 should be allowed to change gender? Nicola on X, formerly Twitter, says no. It should be stopped without a referendum. We don't need a referendum on every policy. Maria on X says. Yes, they should be able to, but should have a conversation with their parents. Jimmy says no one can change gender. Anyone who believes they can needs help. Right, your verdict is now in. Interesting this. 51% of you think that we should have a referendum on whether under 18 should be allowed to change gender. 49% of you say you shouldn't. The irony there, of course, is that is even closer than the last major referendum that we had in this country. Look, coming up.